What's good, everybody? For those of you guys who are new to the channel, my name is Sydney Baker Green. I'm a DP and colorist, and I'd like to welcome you guys to part two of how to color grade using motivated decisions. Today, we are going to start right where we left off in part one, where we color graded scene A, an interior nighttime scene around this warm, practical light that was our key light motivation on the left side, and then we had some blue moonlight on the right side to kind of represent that light coming in from the hallway. What we're going to do now is make our transition into scene B, which is an entirely different grade overall. But what we need to do is we now need to match scene A to scene B while transitioning to this darker, more horror style and tension filled vibe that we're going to go for that is no longer motivated by a practical light, but is motivated by moonlight. So we need to make this room look like there are no lights on at all. The challenge is, is that when we're filming darkness, we oftentimes still light correctly. So how we get to that endpoint is what we're going to be talking about today while matching scene A and scene B. This is going to be a great tutorial for anyone who's a solo DP who functions also as their editor and colorist so we can look at some of the techniques that we have to use on set and then how we work around those in post-production with intentionality. Furthermore, this is going to be a great tutorial if you want to demystify sort of the thought process behind color matching scenes and being able to have one color grade for one scene and transitioning that seamlessly to another scene while making everything feel like it's in the same world. So without further ado guys, let's get right into it. All right guys, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve. We're at the scene that we color graded in part one. If you haven't seen part one yet, the link is in the description. Please finish this tutorial first, then go and watch part one. Everything will make sense at that point. But what we did here is we used 13 nodes in a layer to take our scene from this very bright and warm feeling interior night scene. And we color grade it so that it's more representing the genre that we're in of this horror-esque suspense type of situation here. I'm gonna go ahead and put on output blanking as this was definitely used in the final product. So we'll get the actual feel of what was going on here. So what we did is we color graded her around this practical light here. So this was motivating our key light on the left side. And then we have some blue light coming in on the right side. Now that is because when we go over to scene two, right, we actually change from this interior night scene that is very bright to now more of a nighttime situation, no lights on. However, we can't record with no lights on, right? And we're using a day for night technique in this, but I really just wanna go through and show you where we started. So you can see here, we have that warm light coming out of this room, the same way that the light was warm in the original before we graded it in scene one. And then she comes out and watch the light get cooler. This is very important. This light is gonna be our motivation for our moonlight. And that's why we're gonna color grade this more on the blue side. And this is what I'm talking about with the transition. However, the light has to change in this transition because if it doesn't, one, we're not gonna have the right motivation for the scene to represent moonlight, but two, we're not gonna be able to key this out later. If this was orange, it's gonna to wanna to pick up a lot of the background when we go to key it out instead of keeping all of this stuff separated. So this slight shift just in lighting temperature helps us with that. And then you can see that now she's more balanced for a pure white and then the attacker comes in. Uh, this is a little bit too graphic for me to play through all the way on my YouTube channel, but we're gonna go through and actually color grade this, right? So. This is where we started, and what we're gonna actually do is I'm gonna turn off all the nodes. You can see here that we only use seven nodes, six actually total, in this situation. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna go through node by node, discuss what was done, how that affected the image, and why we did it, again, motivating these decisions. So from scene one that we have right here, what we need to do to match this is we need to match this wood color here to the wood color that we have here as if the light was basically coming from this room the same way. So we want that to match. After that, when we get out here, the color grade's gonna break away into the transition that we have. And we're gonna do this all in seven nodes. It doesn't have to be complicated. So remember here, we are on the darker side here. And so we're gonna play to that on this side, especially because this needs to be dark. So let's go ahead, 
turn off everything and start with our initial adjustment in the HDR wheels. So the first thing that we're gonna do in node one is we're gonna change our color temperature. And all I really did here is I took the temperature slider in the HDR wheels and the tint slider and moved the temperature slider down all the way to its maximum value since we started way overly warm from where we want it to be. And then I just adjusted the tint to kind of dial in and get the wood closer to where I want it to be. There were no other adjustments made here and I didn't use printer lights because this is gonna be a darker scene overall. So those nuances aren't gonna to matter too much. We just kind of want the skin tones to peek through a little bit. We'll go through and adjust some of that in the next node, but you can kind of see this light is looking a little bit more blue already and that's kind of what we're going for, right? Now I'm not gonna go directly into node two because I want you to see how I kind of worked in reverse order. I keyed out the skin and parts of the wood, but I didn't go through and adjust that until after I had my look in there and then I can go in and trick out my skin tones in this wood. So I set up my node for the key and I went to node three. Now this was a simple node where I used the curves tool to add in some contrast. This is giving me more of that darker feel that I want and kind of just setting up those levels uh, to get the contrast that I want, to get the image looking less flat, getting more of that key that we have here. Then your this white wall is acting kind of as our fill over here and then boom, attacker comes up, right? Now the next thing that I'm going to do from there is finalize now my exposure adjustment again with the curves. Now I chose the curves tool for this because it allows me to have way more control over what exactly is happening versus using these HDR wheels. I was able to identify the black point and the shadows in this information, bring that down. And all I really did was I took the highlights down from this point and brought them down lower. Now what you can see here is that we're still preserving a lot of this detail in the shadows right here, right? There are a few pieces that don't really quite fall to black, but don't have much detail coming out. But now you can see it feels more so like this is being lit by this nighttime vibe, right? This is what we have going on. We're feeling the blue peek in. Now you could definitely actually just leave it here if you're going for something a little more subtle and then go back and make sure that you just match this wood. But that's not what I'm going for. I want a little something a little bit more dramatic in this case, right? So we're in this situation. Now we're feeling like it's more motivated by that moonlight. And now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna add in the bluer motivation for that, right? Because moonlight is represented by blue. The color blue is also going to represent that suspense going on. So when we add that in, now we can really get that blue moonlight feel. Now, it's a little too aggressive though. Moonlight's not that aggressive, but we need it to get that to the point where it feels like it's that cooler blue tone. I like my grades a little bit more on that aggressive side. However, now what this did was it threw off our window right here, not our window, but our door frame and the light spilling onto this. Now remember here, all I did was actually just take a global adjustment in this and throw it onto the blue side that I want. Now, why this isn't going to matter is because now we're gonna to go to node two and you can see how that key is now acting, right? If I would have just went through and showed you guys this, it, it makes sense as to why it looks like that, but now it does because I worked backwards in these situations. Now our wood is more favorable to where we left off here which gives us that nice point of reference, making it feel like this is in the same world. So the motivational decision when it came to matching was our point of reference. Again, this wood on the door. So we're coming through now and you can see that as she comes out and it may feel a little sloppy, but then you see it goes away and our finishing note is gonna take care of what feels like more of a sloppier key. And it's gonna solidify this. Now we feel her skin tones peek through a little bit more and the last thing that we're gonna do on this case, I know it looks bad, but we're gonna go ahead and throw in film convert, right? So I just have a film convert node on the end. I'll show you some of the adjustments here. So now that key that we have here doesn't feel so sloppy. We're definitely on the lower side and it may seem like it's really, really dark, but that's the whole point. We're transitioning from this world. Now this wood here definitely matches the wood that we have here. It's just darker because it's not being lit directly by the light. In this case, it's being lit by light that goes into a fall off of this dark room, right? So now we've created that suspense because you can't really see much, but just a little bit of detail until she walks into that moonlight right there. Now it definitely feels like the lights are off in this world. And we can see just a little bit of the skin tones peeking through there. 
just a little bit of the skin tones peeking through. You can definitely see the effect that that has on the door in the background. Still, without this key, that door falls into a not so matched world and the light here would be jarring because the light no longer matches the light that's coming from the room so that was our biggest goal here there's no lights here so our skin tones fall off into blue and everything is much darker you can see that we still have the detail here though we still have detail we can still see the pictures on the wall but now it feels like it's actually just being lit by exterior moonlight and you can see here the effect that that key has right here that we're still getting those skin tones to pop through as i said just a very subtle adjustment that works out nice in our favor but let's wrap it up real quick this is where we started right and we had to light this way so that we could capture the information and the detail that we needed in our camera to have that flexibility so we had to light this scene as if it was daylight and then we were able to go through with our grade and change the look and feel of it. So recap, in node one, what we did was we simply adjusted our temperature. And then let's go ahead and turn off all these nodes individually again so we can walk through what happened. And then we're gonna go to node three because that's the step by step that keyed out my skin tones. And then I came into node three and just added a slight S curve. And from there, we go into node four and then we kind of add in our dark exposure correction where we drop down. So just showing you how this works, you drop down in that shadows area and then you pull the highlights down to soften them, right? Now it feels like we're getting that glow from the room on the door as if there was no lights on in this area at all. But thankfully we have the information here because we lit this area and now we're just correcting for the look that we wanted in post. From there, we go ahead and we add in our blue adjustment and our key adjustment, right? This takes us from this area right here where it's with the key adjustment, it's going to feel overly warm now and without the key adjustment at all, right? We're just doing this to match the wood. This is why we have to work in reverse order because when we add in that blue adjustment, we can come through here, right? Now let's go to node two and I can show you that we can come through and add in the color we want to get the wood to match, right? And then we finish off in Film Convert. And that really takes care of a lot of the errors that we have here in our key. And now this is why I like Film Convert and finishing with it because it just kind of smooths everything out in my experience. This was a scene where you were going to have some key errors because a lot of the colors aren't separated to begin with. And there's some warm hues on the wood already and warm hues on the wall so there's not a lot of separation so we have to do what we can with this 10-bit footage and just to show you guys what's going on in film convert all i did was i pulled the temperature down a little bit and then pulled down the luma correction so that it was simply just the color tones of the film being added onto the scene so that is how we go about creating that look using motivated decisions in post-production keeping in mind where we started in our actual production process Let's conclude. As we can see, when it comes to color grading and shot matching overall and these transitions, we see that color grading does not start in post-production, but rather in the pre-production process and on the actual day of production. As long as we are thinking about where we're trying to end up beforehand and we're making intentional decisions along the way when we're finding our sets, when we're motivating our lights, and we're bringing the story to life in camera, then we are going to have a much easier time in post-production achieving our look because of that intentionality. It no longer becomes something where we're going to create the look in post. We're starting our color grading in the camera and then bringing it to life in the computer. And that's what we can learn from parts one and parts two of this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and turn on those post notifications if you have not. At this time, I would like to invite you to go to the link in the description down below titled Be In The Know. If you sign up, you will be one of the first individuals to know about my top secret color grading project that is going to change the game when it comes to color grading education. Lastly, be sure to follow me on my social media as well as the YouTube fam. Our links are in the description down below. Now more than ever, my beautiful people, if you are ever feeling uninspired, uncreative, or just want to give up on life, remember, every day airplanes take off against the wind. Keep climbing, stay inspired guys, and as always, stay fabulous. My name is Sydney, and I will see you beautiful people next time. Peace out.